know, nothing quite says comfort to me like a hot cup of honey, lemon, and ginger tea. It tastes so good, but it's also really nice whenever I have a little tickle in my throat. Some warming ginger puts a little fire in my belly. Mayhem time. <laughs> now it's good for frustrations, but the little bashing of the lemongrass ensures that you kind of break up the cells and help release the actual flavor in the lemongrass. I love making my own tea because I can switch it up. Whatever I'm feeling that day, whatever flavors I'm craving, I can put in my tea. And as much as I like the classics, it's fun to put a little spin on tradition. I haven't always been like a natural fan of sweet breakfast, so I don't typically eat a lot of waffles, but I love falafel. So I thought I'd make a falafel waffle or a fawafel. So to make my fawafel, I'm gonna start with some chickpeas. They're neutral in flavor, they're high in protein, and they've got this kind of rich, buttery flavor that I'm gonna build up with all of these other aromatics. A little cumin, which has this earthy, peppery, but also kind of citrusy flavor. And then a little bit of actual lemon, because sometimes you can't beat the real deal. I'm gonna start getting these flavors a little bit more acquainted. A little bit of chickpea flour. This is ground from dried chickpeas. High fiber, high protein, crazy satisfying. These are waffles that stay with you. And this is where the batter comes to life. I'm looking for a consistency that's not paste-like, but it's not runny either. Even though I'm not super accustomed to sweet breakfast, this waffle, however, this is something I can get behind. A little sweet, a little savory, and super satisfying. A little bit of oil on here. Just a little bit. I don't want the waffles to be greasy. Nice big scoop. And now we wait. So I mentioned playing with that sweet savory thing. So I'm gonna make these little sesame grape bombs. It's an extremely Mediterranean dish. I'm just gonna heat these up with a little sesame oil. I don't need to cook them through, just warm them. By the time my full waffle is done, I'll have these luscious just sesame coated grape bombs. Now, as much as I love maple syrup, doesn't exactly go with my falafel. So I'm going to make a honeyed tahini sauce just to give a nice little drizzle over everything. Tahini is that classic addition to hummus, but it's also a really common addition for sweets in the Mediterranean too. You can never have too much honey, really. We're talking falafels here. Golden brown little crispy, but it's gonna be really soft and delicious inside. Ooh, 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 ooh. I'm so excited about this one. Really, really excited about this one. The sesame in the grapes plays off the sesame in the tahini. And just one more sesame touch. A few toasted sesame seeds. I'm so excited for this. I'm like almost speechless, which is kind of hard <laughs> for someone like me. Need a bit of that tahini and honey and grape. Mm. 
totally satisfying. The richness of all those flavors you don't think are gonna go together, that bit of garlic, the bit of cumin, but with the grapes and the honey, totally knocks it out of the park. Mm. I can't eat it fast enough. Mm. So good. Soup has been underrated for too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and declare soup the new juice. But mine is going to be a twist on the classic because it's gonna be two soups in one. I love making soup at home because it's a really great way for me to clean out my fridge. A half an onion here, a little piece of broccoli. Just gotta layer in all of those flavors. Garlic, yes. Onions, yes. Leek, a little softer, sweeter version of those garlic and onion flavors all come together in the alchemy of soup world to uh, make something super delicious. Super delicious. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> now those are just the basics. Now I'm gonna make some soup. Into one pot, a little olive oil, and some butter for the other. Onions for both. And potatoes for both. Some of the flavors are going to be the same between the soups because they're both going into the same bowl. Now here's where I start to switch it up. This one gets garlic. And this one gets leek. My garlic friend is a Caribbean squash soup. So it's gonna be all about the spices for that one. So my little leaky buddy over here is my broccoli soup. So now's the time to add that in. Now I need to let these sweat for a bit and get nice and soft. For my squash soup, it's all about the spices. Starting with curry powder. And cinnamon, kind of sweet, smooth flavor that really pops with a bit of heat. A little nutmeg. And to me, this is what really kind of kicks it into Caribbean territory and it smells like Christmas to me. I roasted this with some olive oil, some salt and pepper. Oh, look how gorgeous that is, that caramelization and just pumps up the sweet flavor of the squash. So broccoli kind of gets a bad rap. I'm not quite sure why. It's one of my favorite veg and it's so healthy. What it does need is a little bit of garlic. Smooth, sweet, delicious with the broccoli. It's time to turn these babies into soup. A little bit of veggie stock. And a little bit of cream. So I think I'm gonna get a bit of spinach to punch up that color. A little bit of lime to punch up the flavor. Here's where we get fancy. Little bit of crunch. Mm. Perfectly balanced between heat and sweet. Just kind of like a little mellow current from the cream that runs through all of it and the crunch of the pumpkin seeds, delicious. 
When I said variety is the spice of life, I meant it. So why not eat two soups at once? I love the combination of strawberries and rhubarb because it brings me back to my childhood. I used to spend summers hiding out in my grandmother's garden, reading and eating whatever was kind of closest and ripest. And you can call all of those memories back in the kitchen. I'm making clafouti, which is an elegant French dessert, usually made with cherries, but I'm switching it up and I'm using strawberries and rhubarb because they're my fave. <laughs> So delicious. Now, getting the fruit in just the right spot is actually kind of important when you're making clafouti because what is on the bottom becomes the top as it rises up in baking. So the recipe calls for almond flour, but I don't have any. <laughs> I do have almonds. Now I'm gonna stop blending before I hit the almond butter stage. That's the trick. I just wanna grind them up into flour. Now for my buckwheat flour. It's actually the seed of a fruit related to rhubarb. So it kind of goes perfectly with this recipe. My baking rule, no white sugar. This is coconut sugar. Beautiful color to my baking and flavor too. Create a scent that will have other people remembering your dessert. A little vanilla. Now the eggs are gonna make my batter quite rich, but even more importantly here is they help to bind my clafouti because there's no gluten in any of the flours that I've used, so I need the egg to hold it together. Some almond milk because it goes with my almond flour. The scent of the vanilla and the lemon just wafting up, it already smells delicious. Now to make whipped coconut cream, you need just the cream. So I put my can of coconut milk in the fridge and get it really cold, and the cream separates from the watery part. A Little bit of coconut sugar. And vanilla, of course. It's kind of crazy how well that works. It's even faster than making actual whipped cream. Look at that. Mm. It's gonna go so well on my clafouti, which should be ready by now. You can see how just all of the fruit rose to the top of the clafouti. Now, the brilliant thing about these tarts so that the bottom pops out. <laughs> when it's this easy to make something this delicious, there is no excuse for second-rate dessert. And half the fun is kind of bending the recipe to your will. Don't be afraid to mess with the tradition. 
This is my treat anyway. So I was craving spaghetti, but I kind of thought I needed to fit a few more veggies into my day. So I'm changing it up with squash. Ha. Spaghetti squash is so yummy and so good for you. And it takes a little time, but it's really worth not throwing the seeds out. We pay good money for pumpkin seeds. Why not take the time to make them yourself? Spaghetti squash kind of reminds me of my mom. I think it was just the time, the blessed 80s, and it was very in vogue to make spaghetti squash. So I'm not just doing this because I'm like angry at my squash. The forking actually helps it cook faster. And while I'm at it, might as well roast some garlic. I always love having a few roasted garlic in the fridge for easy and delicious seasoning. These ones too. Crunchy squash seeds and some caramelized, yummy spaghetti squash. Now these are really hot, but I wanna show you why this is called spaghetti squash. It's because it forms these cute little noodles, which are delicious on their own, a little bit of roasted garlic, perhaps. But I wanna take it up a notch, so I'm gonna make a nice veggie-filled ragu. I'm just gonna let these cool a bit so I can actually take all of the noodles out and sneak a peek at my garlic. Roasted garlic is so, so delicious. It's gonna make my ragu extra special. Look at my seeds. Oh, they look so crisp and Mm. Such a great snack. Desk snack material, for sure. Check on my onions. They are looking pretty fine. I think these guys need a few playmates. And of course there's kale. I said I needed to get more veggies in. I'm making a ragu, which is really just a French term for stew. Now you want to talk a match made in heaven? Garlic and kale. And the answer to everything? White beans, of course. I often wonder about people who say they can't get enough veggies in. If you eat like this, you'll be just fine. Gonna pump up the flavor just a little bit more with some baby time. An Italian herb for my Italian dish. Just look at that color. Feast for the eyes and the tummy. Now I think my squash may not be solar temperatures. <laughs> I can turn it into spaghetti. The thing I love about eating veggies, you can eat until you're full, no worries. I'm 
gonna bring the heat up just a bit. A delicious veggie filled take on a classic. I am so ready for this. I love veggies for dinner because they're both light, but also really filling. Spaghetti squash is so fun because it's like noodles, but not quite. There's so much more texture there. And that little bit of sweetness with the sweetness from the roasted garlic, so yummy. One of the things I love about cooking is that it's not static. You take what you learn from chefs, from your grandma, from your best friend, and then you put your own spin on it. And that's how cooking evolves. <laughs>